Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Moon Knight Season 1, Episode 5, Asylum. So I'll have to admit, this was probably the best episode out of the entire series, but it's not enough for me to consider this the best MCU like TV show of all time, which ironically, I've been seeing a lot of people online constantly saying this like on Twitter, oh, this is like the best MCU TV show of all time. It's my all time favorite and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, but why exactly? Because it's kind of like, it's either people's favorite, either because they're just the type of people who jump on everything that's new and say it's their favorite. We've seen this before happen a million times before. Every time there's a new Spider-Man, everybody's all like, oh, he's my favorite new Spider-Man. Until time passes, then they're like, oh, I don't like him no more. Or every time we get a new Batman, they're like, oh, he's the best Batman of like all time. And na 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 and then till another new Batman comes and they're like, oh, but now he's my new favorite and everything. And then time passes and they're like, okay, I like the older one from like many years ago. And again, the Joker. The one that was in the deleted scene of the Batman. Everybody's like, oh my God, this is the best Batman of all, I mean, not Batman, <laughs> the best Joker of like all time. He has the best face. He has the best laugh. He has the best, we barely got to see enough of him. Like his face was blurred for the most part and behind like a, 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 mirror, a window, you barely got to see his whole face. When you did get to see his whole face, it was disgusting looking. His voice mimicked that of Heath Ledger and his laugh was a combination of pretty much everybody's laugh and everything. And it's just kind of like, how, and then it was a deleted scene <laughs> for five minutes. So how do you know he's the best? That's only for five minutes. What if he sucked for the rest of the movie, you know? And I don't understand people like that. Cause like, cause you know, as soon as time passes, they're gonna be like, okay, well I like the one from many years ago. And that's what they do. So I don't understand why people constantly jump on something. Every time something is new, they say, oh, this is my favorite one of all time. It's with Star Trek, it's with Star Wars. Well, probably not Star Wars, <laughs> but, like, but it's with like so many different properties. I don't understand people. And so I do think this was a much better episode because it actually had some meaning to it. It had some drama. It had some emotion. It was very well written as opposed to like the other episodes and stuff. But I don't think it garners that of being the best MCU series of all time is not the best superhero show of all time. It's just an interesting, okay show. Well, I'm still trying to figure out the, uh, the, 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 the reality of what's the point of this show. Because <laughs> I really don't get it. Because like it doesn't even feel like a superhero show. Because it's not a superhero show. It's really not. Where is the big bad villain everybody's supposed to fight? Is it supposed to be like at the end of the sixth episode? And so it's kind of like... Not to mention our hero barely shows up in the show. Like the hero of the show is Moon Knight, period. In costume, it's not his secret identities. It's not his multiple personalities. It is Moon Knight. He is literally the only superhero I know who never shows up in his own show or movie. So like, I don't get that formula and everything. And so I don't get the point of the show. And like I said before, because Marvel has spoiled the crap out of us by expecting something much bigger and better and everything connected, I still don't understand how this is connected to the MCU. So far, it's not. It's, all, it's fine it could be a standalone thing. DC does that all the time. But the thing is, we're used to it with DC. We're not used to it with Marvel. We used to be used to it in Marvel cartoons, but ever since they did live action, we are no longer used to it. So to throw this curveball at us, it just kind of feel weird. Like, I don't know how to feel about that, you know? But to this actual episode, it was a really interesting episode. It was finally, they gave us the origin of like, you know, Moon Knight and Steve and, and Mark all crammed into one. Um, I still feel like this should have been the third episode. That way, everybody can understand where they're coming from and then work together against whoever this bad guy is and stuff. And so like, because is it really that Arthur dude? Like, is it really? Uh, you know, uh, 
he could be a pawn in the bigger scheme of things, you know, but he's villainous, but you don't see him do that much villainous type stuff, so whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, like, now I will say with Hippo Lady, why does she sound British if she's an Egyptian god? Like, I didn't even notice that. Like, I, that's something I've always felt weird about, like, so many foreign shows. Like, there used to be this um, show I used to watch called Rain on CW. And it's supposed to be about a bunch of, like, um, French people. But they all had English accents. And that's something I've noticed in so many different types of shows. There was this other French show I tried to watch them back in the old days and everybody was British sounding. And it's just like, why? Why is everybody, why do they always go to a British accent? I don't get that. And so Hippo Lady, because I have to call her Hippo Lady because I don't know her name. I don't think they even mention it in the show. If this is supposed to be a show about Egyptian this and that and an Egyptian goddess, then why don't you give us her name? But apparently what her thing is, is that she floats around on a boat and she sends the dead souls um either to like a paradise like heaven type um uh reality or like a uh, 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 hades type dark dimension type you know underworld type um reality and stuff so she informs both the dudes that you know they're dead now this is why i don't get if she's an egyptian god this is something that that bugs me okay if she's an egyptian goddess she should know who Conchu is, which she does mention. Yes, later, towards the end of the episode, she knows who Conchu is. So if she knows who Conchu is, she should technically know who Mark is, because that's his avatar. Don't you think they all conversate with each other and stuff? And I know it's been a while since he's talked to the gods, but at some point, they had, somebody had to say, oh yeah, that's his avatar and everything. Because she does mention it towards the end, but then in the beginning, she don't know who he is, because she thinks they're twins and stuff. So in a way, she has to tell them, like, she like she sticks the hand, her hand in the chest, she rips out their heart. Their heart is white for some reason, <laughs> instead of red and gushy. It's more like a crystal. I guess that's Disney way of saying, okay, we can't scare the little kids, so we're going to have, like, a white crystal heart. Now, if you ever watch Once Upon a Time on ABC, they literally stuck their hands in somebody's chest really hard, ripped out their heart, and it was red, but it was glowing and stuff. But you know, it's still alive. And if they could do that on an ABC show, they can do this on a Disney Plus show. <laughs> so anyway, now my only problem with Hippo Lady's CGI, because the CGI is fine, but my only problem is they do something I like to call over animating. See, for some bizarre reason, animators seem to think that when a person moves or talks, every muscle in their body moves around. That does not happen. Okay, L go to the mirror. Say one or two like words. If you notice, not every muscle in your face moves when you talk. There's a stillness to it. So that's what they need to do for animation, but for some reason they don't. I've noticed that in the Harry Potter movie, uh, with a lot of this CGI figure, especially that um, dragon in this, the last movie. I've noticed that in the Ninja Turtles when they was all CGI, and I noticed this in now Hippo Lady. So it becomes kind of weird looking and jarring when you see every muscle in their body start moving around like, you know, in different times. And it's kind of like, have a little stillness to it, you know what I'm saying? So in a way, they kind of try to trick us with, okay, what is reality? Is it both Steve and Mark talking to Hippo Lady? Or is it one of them cuckoo crazy in the asylum and everything? Well, since they already revealed that Hippo Lady is real with the whole Jishin God thing, there was really no point in trying to trick us again. So that was kind of lame. But, so her thing is she has to send the um, guys to, like, their respective underwear. But she says their hearts have to be balanced. But it's unbalanced. I assumed it was unbalanced because there is a third personality we still don't know about. But apparently they have to go through the motions of going back and looking at their past and seeing something they don't know and figure out things about themselves. So we get that little adventure journey. And it's a nice little adventure journey because it gives us character development and it gives us depth. And so because of that, we learn all about Mark. He was just a little kid with a little brother. They went into a cave, his brother died, and it resulted in his mom hating his guts. 
every birthday. She would not celebrate. He had to celebrate with his caring father. And I do like that. I like how they made his father a nice guy. Not make him a bad dude. Like in all this modern day television stuff. So that was nice to see. And so the mom, she really hated Mark. So she would constantly just spank the crap out of him with like a belt. Now they didn't show that part. They just like you could hear it and everything. Um, I think it would be more powerful if they showed it, but of course they have to hide it for the baby eyes and everything because that's too violent for them and stuff. And it probably would have been triggering to a lot of adults who got spanked growing up and stuff. Uh, I mean, if they could show it on the show Community when Britta got spanked by Troy's grandma, I mean, come on now. But anyway, so we learned that Mark created the personality of that of Steven so that every time Mark would um, get punished severely by his mom, he can just hide inside his mind and let Steven take over. And since Steven, because multiple personalities, nobody knows of the other person. So Steven would constantly get the crap beat out of him, but then still think everything's like hunky-dory and everything. This devastates Steven because he's all like, dude, you literally created me just so you can have your safe space and I can get the crap beat out of me and stuff. But then there's more reveals. He, um, Mark reveals that mom is dead. And I'm just like, well, how, who killed her? <laughs> Did Mark kill her? Did the third personality kill her? I'm pretty sure it was just natural causes or whatever. Cause that's the way the show kind of made it seem. At least that's the depression I got. And so when Steven found this out, he had like a nervous breakdown and it caused both of their consciousness to kind of like merge to where they could be now somewhat aware of like the other person and stuff. And so we also learned that, you know, how Mark became Moon Knight and everything is pretty much just from the comics. And that's great right there. So, you know, he was a mercenary. He died on the altar of like Kanchu. And well, he didn't fully die. He was dying, but he's supposed to be dead, dead in the comics. So baby eyes and everything, can't show nobody dead. So, you know, as he's about to off himself, Kanchu like taunts him a little bit and tells him, oh man, be my champion and everything. Give me some vengeance <laughs> and stuff. And so he turns into Moon Knight and once again, a very unimpressive transformation sequence and stuff. And we get to see some of the bodies that Mark has killed in this kind of like graveyard in the asylum. It looked kind of like zombies and everything. Ooh, my bad. So Steven is like giving him crap about that and everything, you know? And so um, at some point in time, they get back on that little boat thing. And then there are some unbalance in like the underworld, right? All the people that Mark killed are now coming after him and stuff. And... They climb on board the boat and Mark is kind of helpless in this. So Steven finally mans up with a baseball bat and starts whacking them and everything. And of course they turn to sand because, you know, uh, the, the, the sand thing I'm actually okay with. I'm okay with that little bit of baby eye type stuff because it's kind of like, you know, that, that was just neat. You know what I'm saying? Reminds me of something of Buffy from back in the day. But then Steve falls over and as he's in the sand, Mark is all, yeah, stop the boat. Yeah, stop the boat. And so like... He freezes in the sand and turns into like a statue. And now all of a sudden the hearts are now balanced because one person is, I guess, gone or something like that. And so now we see Mark in kind of like this heavenly type garden and uh, no, open field with all these like huge like um grass that totally needs to be cut. And so like he's in kind of like this heavenly type state. And it ends. So what the world is episode six gonna be about? And even though this was a nice episode, it would have been better if it was episode three, in my opinion. Put it somewhere nice in the middle, you know what I'm saying? And then have everything revolve after that. Because with only one episode left, what the world are they gonna do? Like seriously, they, you know they're gonna give us tons of action. Like, hey, you wanted some action? Now you finally got some action. You wanted Mark to get back with his wife? Now he's back with his wife. You wanted the bad guy to be defeated? Hey, the bad guy's defeat, kind of defeated. Cause we're gonna keep him along so we can bring him back in case we ever get like another season. That's how they do it in these um, MCU shows and stuff. And so, I still think this was a good episode. It just doesn't garner to be the greatest thing in the whole wide world. And it does not redeem this show, in my opinion. Um, the show is just kind of like... 
I'm, I, I just, I just asked the, the question of just literally, what is the point? Like, what is the literally the point of this show? Because I just don't know. Now, let's give a little context to that of the comic book and everything. So remember, I said I got into Moon Knight because of the pictures, and I wanted to know of uh, other heroes from like other countries. Oh, by the way, they actually acknowledged the dude is actually Jewish, even though the actor is not. But they, you know, but couldn't they have gotten a real Jewish man to play him? Seriously, like I don't get it. And so, anyways, um, in the comics, back in the old days when Moon Knight first showed up. He did not have no split personalities whatsoever. He merely created different personalities to help him in the field. He created Stephen Grant as like a billionaire and he created John Loxley as just like, you know, a taxi cab driver. This helped him like, you know, and he would wear disguises like a fake mustache, ruffle his hair. So that's what he would do. He was very much the Batman type, you know. And so then they try to get kind of a little bit away from the whole Batman thing. So you know, with different creators and comic book writers coming along, one decided in one issue at some point in time in the middle, hey, let's give him multiple personality syndrome and stuff like that. And then it was completely abandoned. Then many, 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 many years ago, they decided to, hey, let's bring back this whole multiple personality thing. It was kind of interesting, but they did it in a weird way. Instead of it being different personalities and um, stuff like that, they decided, hey, let's give him the different personality traits of that of like Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Captain America for some weird, bizarre way. Time passed again, many new writers came on, and they said, okay, well, let's just do the whole multiple personality thing. That would be something interesting and different. And so they did. So then when the show came around, they all like, hey, let's take the the, the, the later parts of like the comics and everything. Because that's a bit different. Instead of being like the same old, same old, same old. And so this is what we got now for the TV show, which was done in a very bizarre kind of interesting way but now when i started to think about it now it's kind of like okay a lot more stuff makes sense but then a lot more stuff made sense to people in a way they knew who the comic book character was so yeah i still don't think this show is great it's all right well i don't even know if i'll even call it good to tell you the truth because it's kind of like if more episodes was kind of like episode five but with some actual action in the, in the suit that would be fine because you know other superhero stuff, they do stuff where it's nothing but drama, and then there's two action scenes for the costume, and that's it. That's the normal standard for a TV show nowadays. But we don't even get that in Moon Knight, so it's uh, eh, you know, whatever. So, eh, you know. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.